There are three branches of government in the United States, legislative, executive, and judicial. The judicial branch is made up of the Supreme Court and other federal courts whose function is to rule on all matters related to the law and the Constitution. The Supreme Court has enormous power that has continued to grow since its inception in 1789. The first version of the court had only six justices. In 1869, that number grew to nine and has remained that way ever since. Unlike the other branches of government, justices aren't elected. The president nominates Supreme Court members as well as federal courts of appeals and district court judges. The Senate then has the responsibility to vote and confirm or reject the appointment. Justices don't have term limits. They're able to serve until they die, retire, or are removed by Congress through impeachment and conviction. The Constitution itself doesn't give any specific requirements for who can and cannot be a justice. In fact, federal law doesn't even require a federal judge to be an attorney. But traditionally, most of them have worked as lawyers. And when it comes to the power the Supreme Court wields, the Constitution is, again, pretty vague. Section 1 identifies the Supreme Court as a third branch of government, and it empowers the court to decide cases. That's pretty much it. Section 2 touches on jurisdiction, and Section 3 spells out regulations around treason cases. There is no mention of interpreting the constitutionality of the laws, the very thing the Supreme Court is famous for today. So how did the Supreme Court get that power? The answer is an 1803 Supreme Court case known as Marbury versus Madison. The case is a little complicated, but basically Chief Justice John Marshall ruled that the law Marbury was using to make his case was unconstitutional. Marshall's ruling established that it was the United States Supreme Court's responsibility to interpret the constitutionality of laws. And so the court's mandate of judicial review was born. And as the highest court in the country, decisions made by the Supreme Court are final. That is, unless a future Supreme Court finds that decision unconstitutional. One well-known example of this was the Supreme Court's ruling in the case of Brown versus Board of Education in 1954 which ruled racial segregation in public schools unconstitutional. This overruled the Supreme Court's 1896 decision in Plessy v. Ferguson, which had legally protected segregation as separate but equal. When the Supreme Court makes a ruling, all other courts must follow this precedent. Unlike the president or Congress, courts only act if someone brings forward a valid case. And unlike the legislative and executive branches, the judicial branch operates outside of elections and voter input but it nonetheless has a profound effect on our daily lives by evaluating the constitutionality of laws to keep our government in check. To see how the legislative branch checks the president, check out our video on the legislative branch.